Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our YouTube channel. I'm absolutely delighted to have uh, Sinead Moriarty join me today. Um, Sinead's book, uh, Just Out, um, has just gone to number one on the bestseller list uh, for the original fiction ca category. It's called About Us. And uh, welcome, Sinead. You might uh, introduce yourself to anyone who's watching. Yeah, thanks so much. Delighted to be here. Uh, I'm Sinead Moriarty. I have published 15 novels with Penguin. Um, kind of women's fiction, I suppose. They probably come under that not very great title, but uh, they're always about families and, and, and current and modern issues. Um, they're usually full of warmth and fun, but also pathos. And they're generally based around pretty serious issues. Um, and my first children's book, which is very exciting, is coming out in September, which I'm very excited about. So it's a whole new world for me coming up next year. So, yeah, so that's what's going on in my life. Yeah, Thanks. no, I saw that. And that one's called The New Girl. It's called The New Girl. Yeah. And I, yeah. I wrote it because I felt kind of compelled to write something around the plight of refugees. So it's about a little yeah. Syrian refu refugee girl who ends up in Ireland and just doesn't fit in. So yeah. um, I worked with the very closely with the Syrian family here who have become really, really close friends. And it was the whole experience has been incredible. That's so nice. Yeah. And yeah. so that's out in September. Yeah, September. And, and what would be the age group, Sinead, for that book? So it's nine to 12. Um, nine to 12. I mean, okay. anyone can read it, but I suppose yeah. that that would be the slot that we're in. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, congratulations on that one as well. I'm Thanks. sure it would be successful. And yeah, I hadn't seen a book um, address that kind of topic. Um, you know, so that's, that's really refreshing to yeah. see. Um, and hopefully, you know, when children pick it up, it will kind of, you know, shift that perspective that there is a lot in common um yeah absolutely and I just think yeah. it's really important for kids because kids are amazing they're so like little sponges you know and um just for them to understand the importance of a kind word how it can change somebody's day and also to be more compassionate and to walk a mile in someone's shoes it's very hard to understand what it's like to be a refugee when you're going to your little school and you're happy out so I just wanted them to just walk a mile in someone's shoes mm -hmm. and the, you know Safa's journey is the same as many many refugee refugee journeys whether from Syria or not you know she is um you know bundled through Turkey and then put on a boat in the middle of the night in Greece um by smugglers who completely let them down so it's the journey of a lot of people and um yeah so it's a very sweet story about a little Irish girl who has to look after her and she's fuming because Ruby has enough going on in her own life she doesn't want to look after Safa the refugee and then it's just how they end up helping each other so it's kind of sweet Aww. So lovely. And how important then is that for you? Um, you just mentioned there you actually you formed a really close relationship with another family in order to write the book. Um, mm. Was that something you planned all along um, to kind of bring it from, you know, a real life experience into the fiction? Mm. Yeah, well, I felt compelled to write a refugee story. So I did a lot of research into it and I wrote the first draft and then I wanted to meet, you know, you can read it, you can read about things, but it's very, very important, I think, to meet somebody who's actually lived through that experience just mm -hmm. to get that extra element of authenticity. And so I rang the Refugee Council of Ireland and they put me in touch with Sarah, who's now okay. like, like, I don't know, I feel like she's like my goddaughter or something. And she was 18 when I met her, but um, we, uh, yeah, we just sat down and we chatted and I've got to know her mom and her sisters. And um, I gave her the book yesterday. I dedicated it to her. So she was crying and I was crying. It was really emotional. But um, she's a very special, special, special girl. She's amazing. She's studying pharmacy. I'm so proud of her. Um, and it was just, yeah, yeah I just wanted to, her, to hear her story firsthand just to give that extra level as I said yeah. a kind of authenticity to it so um you know and then Nick Henderson who's the CEO of the Refugee uh, Association of Ireland read the book and just you know just to make sure that everything was as it should be so yeah I'm really happy really happy with how it turned out oh congratulations um Thanks. so we might go back in time <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> um 2003 2004 um, so I was doing some reading about you and you were working as a journalist in London. Um, you were about 30. And yeah. Yeah, I suppose I'm interested to, interested to know uh, what was that point where you decided that you were going to publish your first book? Um, you know, and what was that journey like to getting it published? And what was that time where you said, yeah, I'm going to do this? Yeah. So I was working as a journalist and I was working for a direct marketing magazine. It wasn't remotely glamorous. It was actually really boring. And I just thought, 
God, I'm actually boring myself into a coma here. And I was having a great time and I was traveling all over the world and I worked with really interesting people, but it was just the subject matter was kind of killing me. Mm-hmm. And then I turned 30 mm-hmm. and I think with every big birthday, you kind of reflect on where you are, where you'd like to be and how you're going to get there. So I just thought, well, if I, if I don't actually do something and write creatively, um, I think I'm going to like shrivel up and die inside. So mm-hmm. I joined um, a creative writing group and okay. I, uh, I had two completely failed first attempts. And um, then I would kept thinking, what will I write about? What will I write about? What's different? What's original? And I couldn't think of anything. And then, as is, is so often the case um, with your first novel, something comes from your own life or your own experiences. And I was trying to get pregnant and I was failing and I was really upset about it. And mm-hmm. I was sitting um, <clears throat> waiting for another horrendous fertility treatment. And I just thought, God, maybe I should write about this and make it funny because... Okay when I was telling my husband about the different tests I was having, I would make it funny because it gave me back control because I had mm-hmm. no control and I found that really frightening. And so I, I would try to make a joke of everything just to try and keep my sanity. And I just thought, well, maybe I should write about this because I couldn't find anything or any novels that had actually really kind of discussed fertility, lots of mm-hmm. nonfiction, but no fiction. Um, and so I wrote the baby trail, which okay. is about a couple who are trying to get pregnant. And then, having had two novels who were turned down by absolutely everybody, The Baby Trail then was picked up and, uh, and, and yeah, I went on to be translated into many languages. And I just think, you know, there's luck, there's timing. And mm. then, you know, I, I, the fact that I was kind of going through this and was able to use it in a positive way, I yeah. think was, was kind of an amazing combination of just things coming together. Yeah, wow. Because, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, today you do see a lot of people openly talk about fertility. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But back then it would have been almost yeah. a taboo subject and something kind of behind closed yeah. doors yeah I, like you know it's very it's a very personal thing it's a very private thing yeah. and not some people don't want to talk about it but it's also very lonely and I think mm-hmm. uh, when I when I when the book came out lots of people uh people that I know acquaintances and then people from all over the world wrote and just said you know they felt less lonely and I wrote because I was so lonely and um I just think that that is yeah as you say at the time it wasn't it was mm. the very beginning of people talking about it yeah. um Monica and friends at that time was going through fertility and it was a big deal that it was on tv and it was being discussed yeah, and it was yeah. just so again I just think I was lucky with my timing it was just the right moment people were yeah. ready I think to to to, to be more yeah. open to talking about it yeah and you were brave about it too <laughs> yeah no I was yeah because you know you are opening yourself up and then mm. everybody knew um but then I also got really lucky because I got pregnant so yeah. <laughs> you know and, um, I, 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 sorry Sinead no, that just just to say, that, yeah, so I was very lucky then. I think I got a lot of my angst out by writing it. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so what so what was the process like getting through the publishers? Um, did you go to many publishers? Were you specific on one or two? Um, you might just explain a bit about that. Yeah. 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 So been turned down by everybody. So then I then um, I kind of got more serious about it and I started really, really looking into the nitty gritty of it. And I saw that um, because it's really hard. I know now that I am published, I go into my editor's office and I see slush piles of just manuscripts everywhere, wall to wall. And I know how hard it is to actually get somebody to read it. That's the hardest part, really. Mm -hmm. So go back to me starting out. I started being a bit more serious about it after the first two failed. And I saw this little tiny little article in the bookseller magazine that said the Penguin were opening an Irish office and I just thought okay I was living in London but I'm Irish and my my character was Irish and I just thought well if they've just opened an office they probably won't be inundated yet so that again timing so I sent my manuscript to Patricia DB and the office had just opened and she had time to read it and again mm-hmm. that's that would that all worked out really well now <clears throat> they gave me an offer and then I just thought okay I don't really, I don't know anything about contract law so I rang a friend of mine and he said look you need to get an agent so then I targeted the four top agents in London that I wanted that I felt would be, you know, good for, for me. And then I mm-hmm. met them all. And then the one I really wanted was a man called Gillen Aiken, who represented Helen Fielding, who wrote Bridget Jones' Diary. And wow. he also represents loads of other amazing people like Sebastian Fox and B.S. Nightball and all that. And I really wanted him and he agreed to represent me. And with one phone call, he tripled my offer. So I always say this because I think it's really important, oh. if at all possible, to get an agent because... Wow. It just makes a big difference. And it also just, yeah, it makes a big difference. But I couldn't get an agent until I got an offer. So the whole thing is, yeah. it's very complicated. And I always say to people, like, there's no right way or wrong way. You just kind of have to figure it out as you go along. Yeah. Um, but uh, I do think, you know, I know people who've tried to do it 
all by themselves. And most people end up going back and getting an agent because it just takes all that kind of, you know, um, contract and negotiation out of your hands yep. and leaves you to focus on the creative process, which is why you got into it in the first place. Yeah, exactly. And in a way, I suppose the increased offer they get kind of pays for them. So Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And the rest. Yeah. 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 And then, yeah, I mean, I've spoken about this before. It allows you then to focus on the creative side and leave all the other stuff to someone else. Um, yeah. You, you spoke there about being rejected quite a few times um, oh, before yeah. this point. What, what made you keep going? I mean, uh, it would have been easy kind of just to give up. Yeah. Yeah. So the first two books I wrote were, I, I sent them everywhere. I sent them to England, I sent them to America, I sent them to South Africa, Australia, New Zealand. I was so determined to get published. Mm-hmm. I thought they were great and they were obviously trash because everyone kept saying no. Um, and it's really, you know, I say it lightly now because, but at the time I was crushed because it was sort of two years of constantly being rejected over and over again. Mm-hmm. But I just, you know, I think, and sometimes when I do, creative writing talks I can always see the person who's going to make it because it's like you can't not write I couldn't not write I had to write it's my happy place it's what I it's the only thing I wanted to do and I was working full time um but any spare time I had I go into the office early I'd, I'd write at lunch I might stay late I'd write at the weekends like I just it's like a compulsion I couldn't not write and I just thought well you know what am I writing for? Am I writing because I absolutely have to get published or am I writing because I love it? And I said, I'm writing because I love it. And that kind of took the pressure off the whole having to get published thing. Yeah. And, you know, I do think it's very important. It is hard to get published. I'm not going to lie. It is hard to get published. But so you have to decide why are you writing? And if you really love it and if it is kind of just something that you have to do and you just feel you have to say things and write things, well, then keep going because I think you probably will make it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the difference. I see it all the time with people. I can't, I, even with having a conversation with someone, I kind of know who's going to make it and who isn't because there's yeah. just a different approach, I think, or just yeah. a different need to write. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's um, really good advice. Um, yeah. I suppose you kind of first and foremost have to do for yourself and do it from within um, yeah. because you have a story to share. And like, you know, it is interesting because you know, everyone has a story and whether they choose it to do nonfiction or fiction, it's still, you know, there's always a little bit of personal, um, which I think you're a testament to, um, you know, and how you dress it up is up to the different author. Um, but yeah, it is, it is incredible that, um, you know, success kind of does come from passion and that does that burning desire. And then like when you have that, other things can tend to fall into place. Like you talk there about timing and everything lining up. Yeah you know it's almost like that happened because you were doing it for the right reason sort of yeah I mean yeah you know it's so true I mean you kind of wonder like did stars align or did you sort of just keep going and grafting and then they did align or I don't know but you know I don't think anybody who has had a measure of success has not had a measure of luck as well you know there is luck involved so um but yeah like you also have to be incredibly tenacious which I was and you also have to be very disciplined which I am and you know so there's no point pussyfooting around like if you want to write a book you just have to crack on and do it and you know people go I don't have time you'll find the time you know if you if this is something you really want to do you will find the time and even if you only get like 40 minutes a day to yourself like get up at Mm -hmm. six get up at half five whatever you know you're putting words down on the page and they build up and they build up and soon enough you'll have a novel so mm. you know I just I just think you know if you if you really want it you'll figure it out yeah you know? you'll make the time yeah you've got some um really good tips on your website I was actually reading them this morning for anyone watching um to check yeah. those out um and you do talk you touch on some of those subjects about you know turning off your phone turn off the tv sitting down and you said like even if it's a couple of sentences you yeah. know it, it 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 adds up it all adds up you know and you might go ash you look what's the point i've only got half an hour you know it's amazing what you can write in half an hour i mean sometimes mm-hmm. some days i might have six hours and i might write a thousand words and some days i might have like 45 minutes and i could write like a really good 500 words so mm-hmm. you know don't don't not think that that half an hour can you can create something or write something down that that that's that that could you know mm-hmm. that's going to move your book forward and it's all about momentum with writing mm-hmm. as well you know you can't really just sort of like write a bit here and then six months go back there you need you need momentum for your story and for yourself so yeah. you know you need you need to say right this is going to be my specific time every day I'm going to sit in this specific spot and I'm going to write and I think if you get that routine and that momentum going mm-hmm. it's amazing what you what 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 comes out and mm. um 
you know and also again like whether you get published or not you're doing this for yourself and if this makes you happy and this is what you love to do you know it's an amazing achievement to, to, to finish a book, regardless of whether it gets published or not. And the great thing about now is, and that this was not available when I first started, you can self-publish mm-hmm. and you can get somebody to, you know, to, to do a beautiful production of your book and have that. And that, you should be really proud of that, whether it sells or doesn't sell, mm-hmm. because it is an amazing achievement. Mm-hmm. You know, so I do think that that I guess when you're starting out, you know, don't think too much about having to get published. Just just write, write mm-hmm. what you need to write. Yeah. Um, No, great advice, Sinead. Um, So if we then looked, I suppose, from that point in time when you got your first one published, The Baby Trail, to today, um, you know, it's incredible to see, you know, I can hear it there when you're talking, where you're talking, the consistency then with you as a writer, in the sense of you knew who kind of you were, you knew about your voice, uh, you knew maybe your audience, you know, you definitely come across as a very consistent kind of show up author I suppose if that's a word yeah, yeah and you know I look at your portfolio and it is incredible and all your you know your covers you know there's a similar theme you've got you know the stories are all you know there's a thread there yeah and I suppose there's kind of one a year at least one a year um, yeah. that, you, that you know and then each was kind of successful in their own right including winning the post on post award in 2015 so what do you think, I mean, if you look to that period of time, what do you think kind of kept you, at, you've talked about some of it, but what kind of kept you at the top? What kind of kept your consistency going? Um, to be able to look back and think, wow, you know, I've, I've literally had a successful career. Well, I guess the baby trail was pretty successful. So I was able to give up my job and write mm-hmm. full time. And I've been, you know, lucky enough to write full time ever since. So I often think people, they go, wow, you know, all those books. I'm like, well, that that's it's my job I guess what I do so you know I'm I don't know what to do with myself when I'm not writing I'm not I'm kind of unhappy when I'm not writing so I mm-hmm. you know I go to my desk every day and I write and, and again people go god you're very disciplined but like I love what I do like I don't want to be anywhere else so mm-hmm. it's not hard to be disciplined if you're privileged enough to turn your passion into your job it isn't that hard to be disciplined but yeah I am disciplined I am I, I think it's really important to be because books books aren't going to write themselves um, I think I'm somebody who loves um, routine, really mm-hmm. works for me. So um, after I had kids, I had three kids now, like I used to find summer holidays really, really hard. They're mm-hmm. older now, so they're kind of independent, but I used to find it really hard because my whole routine went out the window and I couldn't get a rhythm. And I used to, by August, I was tearing my hair out. Um, so, yeah. And I also, sorry, another thing that's really important is that mm-hmm. you have to be protective of your writing time, mm-hmm. you know, because like when I first moved home from London, and I was writing full time, people would be like popping in, ringing on the door. And I was like, no, 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 no. You know, from sort of school hours, nine to two or whatever it was, that's my writing time. And that's precious. And, you know, Zadie Smith said it as well. Like you have to be not selfish, but protective of that time because yeah. that's that's your working time. That's very yeah. precious. So I think that's really important as well. Um, I think um, consistency, I think you know, the harder you work, the, the more ideas come to you. So mm-hmm. that whole thing of writer's block, I all the writers I know who are you know very hard working don't really suffer from mm-hmm. it because it often oftentimes it ha- what happens is when you're in the middle of a book the idea for the next one comes up because you're just you're in this kind mm-hmm. of hole without sounding hippy dippy you're in this you're completely immersed in the creative process mm-hmm. and your head is in a kind of a different place um and each book I've written has been based around an issue so you know obviously infertility I started with that I did adoption I did I've done um, breast cancer, I've done grief, I've done euthanasia, I've written about um, the loneliness of motherhood, um, the uh, um, child abduction, mm-hmm. um, that sounds a bit grim, but they're actually, it's, it's, always, it's always warm as well. And then my About Us is about um, three couples going to couples therapy because therapy, their relationships yeah. are in crisis. So I guess I like, I like kind of, you know, a strong theme and then I build kind of a, a very, Kind of a warm family around that and um uh, what, what i'm fascinated by is how people deal with situations that they find themselves landed in because mm-hmm. you know fact is stranger than fiction and you don't have to look very far to, to hear these kind of incredible stories and how people deal with sort of bombs landing in in the middle of their house and their lives and everybody reacts differently and i find that really interesting in families how everyone reacts differently and how you know a big event in your life can completely change 
the trajectory of your life, can change your relationships, um, and also how amazingly resilient people are. Mm-hmm. And that's really kind of what I'm interested in. It's kind of just human nature, I guess. Mm. Yeah, no, that's um, that's incredible. Um, and how much would you, I suppose, research each topic? Um, I mean, mm. we spoke at the start about how you did that um, for the new girl, but would you do that for every book? Yeah, I do a huge okay. amount of research. So I usually okay. carve out about three months for research. Now it depends. Okay. It kind of depends on the subject matter. Some would be more heavier to research yeah. than others. Um, but I think you have a responsibility and a duty if, as a writer, if you are going to tackle a subject that you have no knowledge of, which I've yeah. tackled many subjects I've no knowledge of, to research thoroughly. And the beauty is that actually, you know, when, when you uh, approach an expert on a subject, it, people love talking about what mm-hmm. they do. So actually everyone's very open and, and, and very um, generous with their time. So actually what I do is I do a lot of research first, like um, one of the characters in my book was a 12 year old girl and she had a very specific type of cancer. So I researched that really thoroughly. Mm-hmm. And then I approached an oncologist and asked, asked them for their time. So okay. by the time you're talking to them, you have you know you, you have a decent um grasp of of the subject mm-hmm. so you're, you're asking specific questions that you need and then i had another one where there were two surgeons who so had to kind of uh, research kind of you know surgery and all that kind of stuff but i find that fascinating as well because i learn a lot so yeah. um i've learned loads and one um one book they half half that was set in eritrea and i had to research all about eritrea the history of eritrea what it's like mm-hmm. so all that kind of stuff i find really interesting and it's and i've met really amazing and fascinating people along the way as well so it's great. I love that part of it. And sometimes mm. actually you have to go, okay, stop. I have to stop researching now and I have to actually just write. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you have to, you have to know when to cut, when to cut off. Yeah. And I'd say as well, your background in journalism, I mean, yeah. helped you and set you up for that in terms of the research element, um, yeah. you know, the quest, you know, the asking yeah. the right questions and really getting behind the story. Yeah, I think so. And I think also sometimes, um, and I certainly, I found this myself, having written the first book about something I knew a little bit about I kind of thought god you know can I write can I write about things I don't have any knowledge of and I think mm-hmm. it's really important for you people to know you can actually write about anything yeah you can write about absolutely anything as long as you are responsible and respectful and do thorough research mm-hmm. the world is your oyster you know that's yeah. all that's about really you know yeah no that's that's good for people to to hear um because we can maybe be confined with thinking well unless yeah. I've gone through it um, but as you said, if you if you dedicate that time up front, yeah. um, you can kind of channel that story as you did with the new girl, um, yeah. you know, and you're the create you can do it very creatively uh, yeah. and, you know, respect that person's story. And that that person's story might not have had a voice if it wasn't for exactly. you. So that's lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Um, great, Sinead. So I'm going to jump on to then a question around um, authors starting out. Um, and I know you, we have touched on some advice, which is really good. But I suppose um, a lot of the authors on By the Book anyway, we're, we're sort of in book one, book two, uh, you know, and facing, I suppose, the challenges of, you know, that keeping going, you know, the marketing side, the promotion side, yeah. putting yourself kind of out there mm-hmm. and, you know, facing, you know, sometimes positive reviews, sometimes negative, you know, all the challenges that come with it. So what advice would you have for, I suppose, early stage authors uh, based on your own experience? Yeah, well, look, like I said, I could have easily given up after t- two books being rejected because it was, you know, a lot, of, a lot of work, but I didn't because I just, you know, I, this is what I wanted to do. Um, I think, you know, you have to pick yourself up and dust yourself down. You have to accept that not everybody's going to like your book. I mean, even now I still get like loads of positive reviews and then one stinker and the stinker still stings. But you can't you can't let that you just have to just, you know, ignore yeah. it. But um, I think you know, it's about I mean. A lot of it is common sense. It's about it's about you've got to work hard. You've got to be tenacious. Don't give up. Um, but also one thing I was saying, this is really, really important. Mm-hmm. If it's not working, park it, mm. put it in a drawer and move on. Because, you know, I know lots of people who've got kind of fixated on a book mm. and have spent years and years and years trying to make the book work. And everybody around them is telling them it's not working. Um, so what you need to do is just put the book aside and then open up all that space for something else. It happened to me actually quite recently about maybe book book 12 or something, I think it was. And I had this great idea and one of the characters had ended up having kind of burns, a little research into burns and skin grafts and the whole thing. And I was writing the book 
And I just knew it wasn't working, but I just thought, no, 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 the idea is great. And I kept going, kept going. And I got to about 50,000 words. So this is like, we're talking about seven months work. And I just, I used to have my stomach used to kind of sink when I sat down at my desk because mm. I just knew it wasn't working. Okay. And eventually I let it go. I just had to let it go. Mm-hmm. And it was torture. But once I let it go, I opened up this whole space and I wrote a book called The Good Mother, which I actually think is my best book. Oh, wow. So what I'm saying to you is if I hadn't let that other book go, yeah. I, I may have eventually kind of made it work, but it was never going to be the book I wanted to write. So if it's not working, let it go. You can always come back to it. Yeah. But, you know, there's a reason why you have that sinking feeling in your stomach. So that's really important as well. Mm. Um, I do think it's also important to, to, to if you really believe that, that this book is going to work, then you know, trust your gut. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's really important to, to get non-family, non-friend advice. So that's why I joined a writer's group. The creative writers group when I was in London just a bog standard I just googled it it was up the road mm-hmm. and that was invaluable because um the tutor kind of gave me really good advice and all my my classmates who we all wrote completely different type of of, of um of fiction um but we all gave each other really honest advice it's much easier mm-hmm. to take honest advice from a stranger than it is from a friend mm-hmm. um that was invaluable to me um I think you have to be very professional you know, mm-hmm. like say my agent and editor, like they hate when people try and send them in like, you know, big fancy things, just send in what they ask you for. Simple, straightforward. Look at what they're looking for. Don't send in anything fancy. Don't harass them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's really important to go to a lot of book launches, uh, listen to writers talking about their experience. You often might meet people there. It's really important to look up books that are like your books and look at the acknowledgements and who is their editor who is their agent because yeah. that's what I did and that's how I got Gillen who then who sadly has passed away and I'm now with Marion Gunn O'Connor wow. but um again he was the right fit you know so you have to figure out who's the right fit for you editor wise and agent wise don't approach the wrong people they find that really annoying <laughs> and all those kind of things you just it's kind of it's kind of a job to get a job if you know what I mean you yeah. kind of have to be pretty serious about it and be invested in the industry that's mm-hmm. It's, I'm not going to say it's easier. It's not easier, but there are, there are more avenues now mm-hmm. for you as, as, as new writers to, to kind of build up momentum. So you do have social media, which is brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and, and you can self-publish if you want, you know, just to kind of get, get, a, get a bit of attention out there. So there's lots of different things and you can blog. Editors are always watching bloggers, by the way. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. So they're always watching bloggers <clears throat> to see what they're writing. Mm-hmm. Um. At, you know again there's there are more avenues as regards sort of online magazines and you know um lit, lit, literary journals all that kind of stuff so you know you do you have to get busy understanding the industry and um figuring out exactly where you fit mm. and then trying to make that happen so yeah I mean you know you do I think you have to approach it in a professional way because people will see that yeah. um so that's that would be my advice and and i'm sorry apart from all that enjoy it like you know like enjoy your writing and you know mm-hmm. be passionate about it um because that, that that translates as well yeah no what great advice um and i suppose you kind of you were talking there and it's like you're talking like the way you talked about your books like research for you and doing the prep work is yeah. sort of as important as you know approaching people yeah. or yeah you know starting the writing so that's kind of coming across that you yeah you know you should kind of take that approach with both which is which yeah. is really good advice yeah I think it is good advice to be honest with you because it it's also it's also going to save you a lot of time in the long run yeah because you're not going to be approaching the wrong people and making mistakes um mm-hmm. so I think you know it's it's to your benefit um mm-hmm. and you know if you do if you are serious about your writing you know spend a bit of time doing doing that doing that research as so so that you have you're approaching the right people and you're targeting the right publishers and you know again i do think ideally try and get an agent first yeah um, and you know what everyone's look like everyone's looking for content so everyone wants to find a new writer wants to find a new mm. book so you know don't don't be worried that you know the market is saturated everyone's looking for the next the next big thing so you know like believe in yourself mm. you know it, it will happen yeah as as you've shown to be the case um now your your mom was a a writer or an author as well um so how did that influence you growing up yeah so my mom um 
uh, when we were around, I was, I was just finishing primary school, I think, and uh, she decided she took myself and my siblings to see the Waxworks Museum and we didn't know who anybody was and she was shocked she and appalled that we didn't know who James Joyce was and W.B. Yeats and Jonathan Swift. So she and her friend started writing um, books for, sort of not, I suppose, nine to 15 year olds, maybe, mm-hmm. about Irish historical figures. So they're like little mini biographies aimed for kids. Uh, explaining who James Joyce was and W.B. Yeats was Lovely. and um, Gronia Well and all these different people. So she did, I think she's written, I think she wrote nine and the Yeats one is still at the Yeats exhibition in here in Dublin. And yeah, so, the, so, so I saw her being rejected. I saw her writing longhand uh, at the kitchen table and then I went to all her book launches. So there's no shadow of a doubt that that showed me that A, it could be done, mm-hmm. that B, it wasn't straightforward. Um, but going to book launches and seeing book the book in shops, like, you know, I, I was like, okay, so this is possible. Now, I didn't have the confidence. I always wanted to write, but I didn't have the confidence to try until I, I had that sort of 30th birthday moment. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, looking back, that was the right time for me because I, I needed some life experience. I needed to yeah. do all the different things that I had done before I was ready. But that's not the case. Some people can write amazing books at 18. But so, I yeah, so definitely it was... Um, it was inspirational and also um, it showed me that it is possible because, you know, a lot of people will tell you, oh God, don't bother trying to get published. It's a nightmare. Yeah. But again, it's, it, it is different now. You, you, you do have so many more avenues. Um, and I think also the other thing um, is I was talking to a young wife the other day who was totally honest and she was saying, you know, talking about how you know, Amazon are now publishing and Book Couture, they publish eBooks in America. They're phenomenal. There's so many other ways of getting your book out there than mm-hmm. necessarily physically in the shop. And if your book does well as an eBook format, it's going to get published yep. uh, physically. So, you know, again, everyone's watching. Just mm-hmm. remember that everyone's watching what's going on. Um, yeah, I suppose, especially with social media too, um, which I've kind of seen with some some authors, um, you know, they obviously work hard to build their audience, but once they have that audience, they have an audience to sell their book to, um, yeah. you know, which is really powerful, I think. Yeah, it is. And social media thing, again, some people are brilliant at it. Mm-hmm. I, I find it does take up quite a lot of my time, which I would ideally rather be spending writing but it is um it's it's part of what we do now yeah you know it is it really is yeah um so uh, yeah so that it's, I mean I'm I'm struggling to kind of keep up with all the all the all the, the moving and shaking in social media myself so that has been challenging for me at times yeah uh, looking so at teenage, you, teenagers teenagers can help me but uh, yeah I've got some teenagers here who can help me but I you know that it's something that you know was not around when I started um yeah I do feel that it does take up quite a lot of time. That's the only thing about it. Yeah, yeah. So you manage all your own accounts and all your own content. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it is. I mean, it's sort of like one of those things where it's it's necessary, but it at times it can feel like, you know, when, you, when you're productive writing and you get so much out of that, it can kind of feel yeah. like a lot of time where you mightn't see anything back, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, but, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's part of life today, I suppose. Um, so another question I have is um, around, you know, if we looked at your career, uh, what would you say was a, a kind of high point and what would you say was maybe a low point of that career? Um, well, you know, some books have done really, really well and some books haven't done as well. So obviously it's always disappointing um, when the book doesn't do as well as a previous book. But then again, that kind of keeps you on your toes because you are only ever as good as your last book. Yeah. Um, highs was, um, I mean, I was nominated eight times before I won the award, so I have to say it was actually nice to win it. I was going, always a prize night. Um, so that was nice. Um, okay. And yeah, I mean, look, lows, yeah, lows are, I suppose, when, 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 yeah, when, when a book doesn't do as well as you'd hoped. But mm-hmm. I don't know, you know, you do. The great thing about, constantly working forward is you know when a book comes out I'm already in the middle of the next book and that's really important to me because yeah. it keeps me focused because if I wasn't didn't have anything else on the go then I would probably overthink the book that was coming that that was it yeah. that was coming out so I think it's really important to always be working on the next project always be moving forward yeah because that's really good for just your your own kind of self-esteem as well I think yeah no that's um that's actually such good advice because I was going to ask you 
if a book goes out and it doesn't do that well, do you ever yeah. dissect that? Do you ever kind of go back and kind of say, I wonder why? Do you look at the feedback? Um, or do you kind of say, it's done. I'm on my next project. That's what's going to get my attention. What's your approach? I kind of focus on the, on the current project. Yeah. yeah, no, I do. I don't really dwell on it too much because yeah. <clears throat> it's done. Um, yeah. So no, I would focus on the current project. And I, and I do think it's really important to have something on the go because mm-hmm. you need your mind to have a positive, a positive focus on a positive. Um, yeah, just to be to be occupied because mm-hmm. I've seen people and they become so fixated on what didn't happen. Yeah. that they're not focused on what can happen you know wow. so I mean that is such important advice actually that I would give yeah I like that line yeah so true <laughs> it's true for a lot of things in life for life um, yeah. yeah um so then in terms of um outside of writing um do you have any hobbies what are your passions outside of writing um you might tell us a bit about that yeah, it's funny, actually, because because my passion is writing in a way I've turned my hobby into my job. Um, okay. But yeah, like I look, I, you know, um, I've got three kids, so I have a very busy life outside work. Um, I, you know, I try and go for a walk every morning to clear my head before I start. I find that really helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, I've just taken up tennis again in my old age. Um, and um, yeah, I just have a really lovely life, actually. I'm also the books ambassador for Easton, so that takes yeah. a lot of time. I read a massive amount of the long list every so every season we choose eight books myself and Rick so there's a massive long list that we have to go through to cull yeah. it down to eight books so I do a huge yeah. amount of reading um yeah. that's probably what I spend most of my spare time doing I also love Netflix don't get me wrong um <laughs> but I think that um you know so I turned 50 last year and that was kind of a big thing for me mm-hmm. and at the age of 45 I got really sick and okay. I was di- I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. I've wow. never been sick before in my life. I'm incredibly lucky health wise, but I was absolutely yeah knocked sideways. I spent two years in that hospital, and that really um, threw me. I have to say, I found I was a very um, I really struggled. And the only mm-hmm. thing, the only thing that made me happy was writing. Like I tried, I went to you know I tried meditation and yoga, and I went to counselling, and I just couldn't get my head around it. And the only time I could just stop worrying about my health it was when I was writing so that I really realized how important it is to me like it is mm-hmm. it's everything it's my happy mm-hmm. place so the reason I brought that up was just to say that writing kind of saved me and then I also have then really focused on health and I mean it's an autoimmune condition there's nothing really I can do about it I have to take mm-hmm. a lot of drugs to keep it under control but I have finally got it under control so I do have my life back and I really really appreciate it and I think I'm so much more focused now on you know being healthy um exercising what I can when I'm feeling good and all that kind of thing but also I think I realized the importance of writing in my life like it is it's so much more than just something I do like mm. it is it, it it's my sanity it's my Your safe therapy. place it's where it's where I go yeah yeah and I think that you know I value it I value I mean I value it even more than I did before Mm, wow. um and I also value the you know the, the benefit of, of good health and mm-hmm. um again you know I then worked with Arthritis Ireland and we did uh, we launched a book of um sort of first-hand accounts from different people who have rheumatoid arthritis and they're all telling their stories and that was, that was kind of amazing because I met lots of fantastic people through that and also it's like anything in life I kind of found my tribe because nobody understands what it's like to go mm. through something unless they've gone through it mm-hmm. so that was great for me as well um that was an amazing night actually meeting with those people and publishing the book was lovely so yeah so no so like you know lots of different things happen in life and I think that um the one consistent thing I've had in the last nearly 20 years has been my writing and I realize that it's, it's more than just the job it's more than just a mm-hmm. hobby it, it means it's it's as I said yeah it's somewhere I can go it's my happy yeah. place yeah Wow, that's so lovely. Um, it's so lovely that you kind of, um, you know, you, you started, you took a chance in yourself, you didn't get, give up. Yeah. You know, you went through this, I suppose, you know, ups and downs, like, you know, with, as you said, some Absolutely. books were better than others, but you just yeah. kept the focus. Um, obviously then health, you know, um, which I can totally relate to is, you know, is kind of all we have. Um, and yeah. to hear then the kind of writing was therapy through that and like, you know, for your mental health more than anything. Um, Absolutely. 
you know, is not such a gift. And then to, to be talented, I suppose, as well is, is amazing. And maybe, you know, you got part of that from your mom and it kind of lives on through you. Um, yeah. and, and more importantly as well, I think with you that you're, you're, you know, you're telling these stories, um, you know, that maybe are, are otherwise going unheard, um, you know, and that you have this kind of appreciation now. And then, you know, on the back of all of that, then to have your, your latest book go to number one, I mean, what an incredible story yeah. um, from start to finish. You like you're you're such an inspiration, I think. <laughs> well, that's very really nice of you to say. But you know what? It's like, you know, again, I've been lucky. Um, yes, I have worked hard. Um, but, you know, the other great thing about this is. There are so many gorgeous people in publishing, like it is such a lovely world. And, you know, Irish people. You know, when I first had my first book published, people were like, oh, God, Jesus, wait till you see now, you know, you're successful now. An awful place of begrudges. All I have had is support and kindness. I have made amazing friends through writing, um, not just other writers, but booksellers, publishers, mm-hmm. um, you know, people who just work in, in the publishing industry. Um, it is a gorgeous bunch of people. Um, I think I feel very lucky to live in Ireland, actually, because I know I have colleagues in England and the US who say it's not as warm and fuzzy over yeah. there. It's a bit more cutthroat. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, it's lovely. It's really nice. And I also really value the quiet writing time. I think it's I think yeah. particularly as, you know, we live in a very busy, noisy world you know, when you do have kids and they're older now, when they were small and everything, life is very noisy. It's very full on. And mm-hmm. I really value this quiet mm-hmm. writing time. I think I think it's a privilege to be able to just sit down and just disappear into my own head mm-hmm. for five, six hours a day, whatever I can carve out. So I do think, you know, I do feel very fortunate to do what I do. Mm. Yeah, I know. That's brilliant. And so you, we started the conversation and we talked about the milestone birthday. Um, oh, yeah. which was well which was 30 yeah and that kind of was the you know with had you rethink things and then you've just mentioned there you had another milestone birthday mm. at 50 yeah. so mm. was there anything there that kind of you know at that milestone birthday that you've re-evaluated that you're kind of looking forward to now for the next 20 years yeah well um well it, I was 50 in the middle of COVID right the first yeah. the, so it was 2000 yeah last year and 2020 and um you know I had, I had saved for three years for the you know holiday of a lifetime I was supposed to wake up on safari <laughs> um I woke up in my my house <laughs> had a few friends <laughs> in the garden but what I felt was blessed I woke up and I yeah. counted my blessings at 100 but uh my goal was to have a children's book published before I was 50 oh so I'm not counting last year because it doesn't count so even though I'm past 50 this my uh, children's book is coming out in September so that was my goal yeah Very so good. um and it's happened and again that was not straightforward mm-hmm. it's taken a good few years for me to get this over the line so just you know in case anybody's thinking oh it all sounds very easy it was not I really had to hustle this book because I believed in it so passionately yeah. but I have got it over the line and so that was my goal yeah so I'm really pleased um, yeah really pleased congratulations um and do you think there's more um children's books in you yes. yeah 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 okay. I've loved it was a joy to write yeah. so I'm I'm hoping look if it does well great it might tank who knows but yeah. um it's something I wanted to do I definitely have more stories whether people mm-hmm. want to publish them or not we'll have to wait and see yeah. but um I have loved the, loved the experience it's yeah. really, I find writing kids books really joyful actually yeah and I think that's such an important age group too nine to twelve yeah. in terms of yeah in terms of getting those stories out there um, yeah. and getting that age group reading yeah and away, oh, and away from the screen yeah couldn't yeah. agree with you more you're so right yeah yeah um Sinead it's been an absolute pleasure I've taken so much from this conversation um you know I'm I'm just so appreciative that you took this time because I know your schedule must be so busy um Pleasure. but you know for you to kind of be able to impart some you know wise words with um you know Irish other Irish authors starting out it's just so valuable and I know it'll be really appreciated so thank you so much um, Not at all. and I you know I like just keep going it's hard sometimes you just you just you just feel like what's the point but honestly just keep going because it can happen it will happen I know yeah no it's um it's been such an inspirational conversation because sometimes it is easy to see you know uh, bestsellers and just think it kind of you know mm-hmm. comes overnight um but as you said no there's there's a huge graft there 
um, to get to the top. And even when you're there, you know, yeah. you said you're only as good as your last book. Absolutely. Um, and as I said, some really good uh, tips on your website. Um, you might just mention your website. It's uh, what it is. Yeah, so it's Sinead Moriarty.com. Um, I'm also on Twitter and Instagram. Um, I'm probably update I'm like I'm probably you know more active on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, my website, then I need to update my website more. But look, you yeah. know, and if you want to DM me, you're very welcome to. Um, and look, you know, I again all I can say is just keep going. If this is what you this is what you love, this is what you enjoy, just keep going, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Exactly. Sinead, have a wonderful day. And um, I look forward to seeing your continued success. Well, fingers and crossed, eh? <laughs> I'm, def I'm definitely going to get my hands on a copy of The New Girl. It sounds amazing. Oh, well, so, thank you. Well I, I'm actually that. really happy with it. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I think it's brilliant. Okay, thanks, Sinead. Thanks a million.